Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Donate as little as a dollar an episode to get your name in the show and access WMS Gold content. Check out our page at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show or click the link on our site. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's episode 426. I'm live here, Sorgatron. At Sorgatron in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk about pro wrestling like we live in our mom's basements. No, this is not my mom's basement. I own this basement. Thank you very Sorg, much. You're joking. We're already off the rails. Sorg, mom's basement, come on, that is a stereotype, and we do not support stereotypes here on the Wrestling Mayhem. Absolutely not, LB. Right. <laughs> No stereotypes. I'm not going to ask anyone to get in my van because that is a stereotype of mustachio man. Mm-hmm. Because because your van is now full. My van is full because oh, of sweet, sweet, sweet candy. Sweet, sweet, Bobby. Uh, sweet, and that's the Riz Bobby at candy. V.E. Riz. Also joining us and also with us is, from the Bronx, New York is Mad Mike. He's dancing for you on audio. Dance, dance, dance. Mm-hmm. He has no audio. He's muted. No audio. Going on. Whatever you did made your audio go away. No audio. Oh, it's bad. Damn it. There it oh, is. You're back. You're back. back? All right, okay. reset. Do it again. Reset. Sorg, I am in the Bronx for a few more weeks, and then I move into my mom's attic. <laughs> That's oh, no. how we're moving on up. We're moving on up. Moving on up. Stereotypes, <laughs> Sorg. Yes. 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 And of <laughs> course, apartment in the sky. Kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Um, exactly. Deluxe is right. Um, anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find us we're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all of our shows, including the Indie Mayhem Show, the wrap ups for TNA. Uh, NXT, uh, WWE Raw, of course. Uh, you can draw, you can check us out. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and iHeartRadio in audio and vi- video format. So, however, however you want to uh, uh, consume us, and also uh, you can check us out on the. Uh, you can drop us a line at Good Times. Good Times, Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com or 412-206-WMS0. Um, and you can also uh, please leave comments, stars, shares on iTunes, on YouTube, wherever you're finding us so other people can check it out too and we can see how we're doing. You can join us here live it every Tuesday. It validated. Live at live.sogertronmedia.com about 9 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. And also, do you want to be the boss of us? LB, do you want somebody to be the boss of you? Yes, Sorg. That's all I've ever wanted. Exactly. We're we're not we're not look for we're we're looking for you to be our bosses. Join the Patreon at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. We'll be doing some special things for you guys here in the near future. Uh just like uh the wrestling revolution.com has joined us, uh giving a dollar a show, as well as Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! Also contributing we to the show. We are bosses. We can't make decisions on our own. No, we can't. Or but I don't know Look how we I got. My I don't know how we got this far without it. And of course, we oh. start the show. Speaking of bosses, I mean, some people guide the beginning of the show in their fan mails, including great questions from Dustin this week. He says, "Dear Mayhem cast and crew, I'm glad he kept it easy for me." Uh, I had an amusing moment when listening to last week's podcast as I realized I was being scolded for improperly spelling a made-up word. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for the laugh. Also, I would... I believe that was the uh, the mayhem... It was like the term... Mayheminators. 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 Also, I would, too, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't explain that global... What, 
uh, that Global Force does not have a direct uh, correlation with the Ring of Honor. It is the common association of New Japan that I was linking the two. I apologize for any confusion. Thanks for clearing that up. Uh, questions. Number one. Is it wrong that I want to see Dean Ambrose randomly attack any man <laughs> holding a briefcase now? I'd love to see him do vignettes on Wall Street, randomly attacking men in business suits as they approach them. Uh, as they approach their office buildings. I see that on DBL and, and, and Colt. That's not really a question. Oh, I guess, is it wrong? Uh, no, it's not wrong, and it should happen. Please make this happen. I, I would love for Gene Ambrose to do that. See, Gene mm -hmm. Ambrose? Yep, Gene Ambrose. Gene Ambrose. Oh, I see what's going on there. You're mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, Mike? Yes. Uh, I would like that very much, and if he needs someone to dress in a suit and hold a briefcase, I submit my um, my form to be one of those people, because I live near Wall Street. You want to be tackled by Dean Ambrose? Sure. Mm. Mm. I can tell Jen Carlin's exactly what he smells like then. Oh, there you go. There it you probably go. smells like uh, worn wife beaters and denim. skinny yeah, denim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing old. I'm guessing old spice. Number two, after the uh, the Royal. Oh, what the fuck? What? God damn it! What's <laughs> up for lunchbox, bro? I didn't want to weigh in. Whatever. Lunchbox. Lunchbox. No, no, no. Next question. Go on. No, no, no. Lunchbox. Go on, go on. Do you have any thoughts on this? No, no thoughts except for the goat milk thing. What? <laughs> what? I said a thing about goat milk. The listeners know. That's what. That's all that matters. They heard it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, after the roaring success that was uh, McMandow, who is on the top of your list for who you want to see Mr. Sandow impersonate next? Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie? Okay. I want to see Sandow in a dress. I want him to shave his legs. Like well, probably already shaves his legs. I want to see him in a skirt. Wow. Riz? Actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, for, because he, the whole thing was trying to get him noticed with the WWE, the, the, the higher ups at WWE, and he saw that Vince McMahon, the one with Vince McMahon, got Stephanie's attention. So maybe next week he comes out as oh I don't know, Triple H, and then next week Shane, and then next week Stephanie, and each week gets worse and worse and worse. Until finally, he's dressed as Hornswoggle, <laughs> and then uh -huh. it all and then it all comes together, right? Yeah. What about you, uh, Mad Mike? I, I I've given this a lot of thought, and um, I kind of want to see Damian Sandow dress as the genius, hmm. just for irony's sake. Just for irony's sake. Just make it. Yeah. Why not? Like and have have him throw frisbees. Have him have a scroll. You know, a little mortarboarding down to be great. Um, so the, he's just Damian Sandow. Oh, there you go. Uh, and, Dustin yeah. gives his answer. Uh, he says, he, I, I would get a good kick out of seeing him come out as uh, Regal at the beginning of NXT and commence to do commentary for the majority of the show until Regal manages uh, to hop on the st out on the stage, duct taped, and wearing only his British flag briefs. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I know I'm fucked in the head but you guys keep uh, reading my emails so what does that say about you uh that says we will read anything that comes to us even odd ads to be on television that we aren't sure is real uh, okay uh number three what three, uh, number we three we didn't read that Oh, yeah, no. Uh, with the announcement of Bound for Glory being held in Japan, I was caught off guard to say the least, uh, since the card is uh, going to be a bit of a bit different feel than the traditional Bound for Glory. Do you feel that TNA should abandon the BFG series uh, leading into the show, or will the uh, series be a good enough platform to set up feuds needed for the pay-per-view? Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like Japan is going to be the star of it and, and i imagine they're just gonna sprinkle that with a bunch of japanese guys right right Riz, you're, you're nodding your head at me they're the tna has the the the, the they, 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 they 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 like to promote other companies yeah 
Oh, they're talking Bellator. They're, they're pushing hell out. New how, Japan. Yeah, they're just like a show for everybody else somehow. It's not interesting it's how that just, happens. Yeah, it's just a giant commercial. So they're going to have people pay to see No Surrender, or not No Surrender, Bound for Glory in Japan with New Japan Pro Wrestling wrestlers. And it's just not going to work to promote TNA. Mm -hmm. That's something that they have to do. And yes, they're going to get awesome. They're going to get an awesome crowd because it is Japan. But they're not, they're going to be there to see Jesse Goddard. (laughs) <laughs> They're not going to be there to see Crazy Steve. They're not going to be there to see the next. Uh, they're not going to be see. They're not. Most, some of them will be there to see Jeff Hardy. Not as many as you think. But what they want to see is their Jap- Japanese wrestlers. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine too many people traveling from America to see this. No, like really, no, no. 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 People wouldn't travel to Texas. That's true, too. That's true, too. Or New York. um, As far as the Bound for Glory series goes, I think they should keep it because the Bound for Glory series is one thing that TNA seems to do right every year because it's very interesting. It um, explains a lot of the throwaway matches that, that they happen to have on Impact sometimes. And once you get who's challenging for the title, then you can have like a whole series of TNA versus New Japan. Yeah. Like like WCW did back in the 90s. Like that'd be perfect. Yeah, and they're Hell, no, you can, they're you no can sp- even have like Sonata win the Bound for Glory series and represent New Japan. Why not bring back uh the World Cup for this? That would be great. But there's only two um there'd only be two competing countries. Would the there world, be uh, the, is there any problem with with having other countries represented? Really? Even though they're in Japan? Because uh, I think the Japanese they, will appreciate it. I don't think they get people to go out to Japan to do it. That's mm, true. Mm. That's true. And plus, th- plus, they taped the show four weeks at a time beforehand. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess you could throw away a lot of the World X Cup matches on Impact and have the finals. It could be modified for just a pay-per-view, though. I, I, yeah. I don't mean like, you know, like it entirely was. I'm not talking about like maybe a variation on it. Well, they already do the World X Cup as one of those uh, one night yeah, only pay per views. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But that doesn't mean because, like, I don't feel like a lot of people watch those. So it's kind of like, well, no, no, no one watches. those. Nobody like, watches those. Not for pay, at least. I've I've only watched one, and that happened to be the one that I went to. Yeah, exactly. Um, he finishes. I uh, LP. Do you have any other comments on this one? I uh, I think that. It's going to be some of the best wrestling that TNA has had in quite a long time. Uh, yes, I think they should get rid of the Bound for Glory, whatever fucking competition points thing, because they always fuck up the points anyway. And there's, It always comes down to some kind of logistical problem. Where it's like, well, if he just pinned him instead of going for a submission, he would have gotten a point. Some dumb shit like that. They should just do away with that because they lack the brain power to manage it properly. Yes. Um, but... As a standalone event, just a pay per view, I think it's going to be great. Matches are going to be great. The crowd will be fun. It's going to be fantastic. But I also agree, it's not going to do much in the way to promote TNA. No, no, it's probably not. not. Probably not. I, I wonder how they do now in Japan. You know, like like how is that market for them? So uh, he finishes off the well, email. Th- what? Remember when we went to uh, what was the IWC event that we went to that it, like, Bret Hart was at? And um, Superstars up in Meadville? Meadville. It was up in Meadville. That shit was packed. There were so many freaking people there, right? Yeah, about, about 1,200. Now, right. Now, that was because they don't have any kind of wrestling, let alone IWC. Japan has wrestling, but it doesn't have TNA. So I think it sends it some different to the draw crowd. And as it was, look at how many people left before the AJ Styles' Tony Nese. Yes. You know. That was, yeah. Um, to finish off the email, that's my time, guys. Uh, one point I want to make is that uh, avoiding spoilers is a bit hard when you frequent news sites. So to avoid spoilers, future spoiling future impacts, I have dropped uh, the websites in favor of podcasts uh, being my news source. Since I have done so, I seem to have a better appreciation for the wrestling in general, so much so that I have uh, started to watch even the WWE again uh, with less jaded eyes. 
it's very refreshing and a great perspective to just enjoy what you enjoy because you enjoy it. That or I could still be drunk from last night. Long live vodka, Lana and Rusev. I hope each of you have a wonderful and safe week. Regards, Dustin. There you go. Yeah, I, I think it makes a difference. You know, knowing what's happening. I mean, that's, the first that's, step. That's why we watch Raw live every week, regardless, right? Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think it makes a difference because mm-hmm. I ha- I haven't been reading Impact spoilers mm-hmm. for a couple months now. Well, that's Impact. And, but I, I, I'm just saying, mm-hmm. it hasn't really changed well, no. my like um, appreciation of the product one way or the other. And, and what, what about something like SmackDown but, or, or something like that? Like, are you, one, are you watching SmackDown? I guess, and I'll get to you here mm-hmm. in a sec, Chris. Um, and and if. Mm-hmm. If so, do you do you bother with spoilers? Do you avoid spoilers? Uh, I I watch SmackDown sometimes based on what matches are listed. Okay. For the card. Okay, but you you think it's better or worse without spoilers in that case? Uh no, I I think SmackDown suffers because of the spoiler aspect. But TNA, I'm trying to avoid spoilers because they tape like a month in advance. Like yeah, I haven't read anything yeah. to happen mm-hmm. at. I haven't read anything that happened in New York City, but the TNA people spoil it themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It also stinks. Yeah. Sometimes when you're around, like he's, he's talking about the news sites, and depending on the podcast, you know, we, we I mean, we've, you know, we've, we've gone into spoilers before on the show, and then, until we said, no, let's not do that, right? Um, yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, you know, sometimes you know, just going to wrestling shows, you hear other people talk about it. So, uh, Riz, I'm sorry. No, the thing is, I don't know why he, Dustin, the the first step in any plan is to admit you have a problem. (laughs) And you frequent sites that show spoilers. Mm -hmm. The bleacher reports of the world. (laughs) <laughs> the wrestling news of the world mm-hmm. and those things. You should not be going to those sites. No, no, no. Wait. Okay. Wait. Wait. And then, oh, go ahead. Finish off. I, I have a thought exercise here. Uh, well, well, thought exercises. Uh, but, but, going to podcasts is a great way to show your love and affection for professional wrestling. And it is it is known by you know by you for watching us and by everybody here watching us um, that you like professional wrestling, but also following um, you know guys like like Matt McCarthy from We Watch Wrestling or uh, or the Jericho podcast or the Jr. podcast who's who who all just talk nonstop about professional wrestling. Yeah, and. It doesn't give you the wins and losses like the the spoiler ridden bleacher reports do. It just goes out there and shows you why you, the fan, likes professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I know I so threw in wrestling. Yes. So you're saying he shouldn't blame the podcasts for uh, him discovering spoilers. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. What is it? What, what I'm is saying it? is, what I'm saying is, he go him going from news sources to podcasts is a good step in oh, ridding, see. yeah, in ridding his mind of going to see spoilers because he knows podcasts will not spoil anything mm-hmm. unless they happen, you know. Unless it's something like that happens Go. as of press time, like I can talk about main event, which just happened. Yeah. If yeah. he hasn't seen it yet, yeah. then it's a spoiler. But if he has seen it, then you know. I have not seen main event, so I haven't seen main event in so long. <laughs> I just forget to go back and watch it. I've watched main more. A fun show. I've watched more superstars main event lately. It's not bad no, when you no, skip so past the recaps. How is there anyone left for superstars? It happens. 
It happens. Yeah. They, they had like Adam Rose last week and uh, Hornswoggle and Heike Slater and uh, Ryback versus somebody. Um, yeah, it's, they got they got stuff going on. Um, I that's probably that's a, in a mess. okay. I got another question on that actually. Uh, but but here's a, real quick, I, and I don't want to get too much into it. But what do you guys read, listen to, uh, in general? Uh, me, I do have a feed in my feedly for WrestleZone. Um, I think there's another one as well, and uh, and uh, and of course following you know Justin Labar and some you know just wrestlers and other fans on on Twitter. Uh, aside from that, podcast wise, for me it's it's art of wrestling. It's whenever I get around to it, the Jericho cast and Stone and Cold cast mm-hmm. and like all those guys that are coming up on podcasting now. Um, haven't for a while, but I used to listen to Between the Ropes a long time <laughs> um, until they got a little bit weird. I haven't I haven't jumped back into it since they've kind of reestablished their their stuff. But uh, but I'm curious, what are you reading and listening to? And we'll just go around the horn real quick. LB, um, I. Uh... I read uh, wrestling or 411 Mania, the re- their wrestling site. That works for me. They always tag their spoilers, which is good. Um, and I read Wrestling Observer, not like the paid site, but just their like daily updates. I get a little bit from there. Um, and I listen to this really good show uh, at a Pittsburgh called the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I've it never is. never heard of it. Uh, well, where the fuck are you then? Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I've tried really hard to listen to Jericho's podcast and listen to Steve Austin's podcast and Jim Ross's and all of these, and they're I just they're fucking unlistenable to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're so dull, and I don't know why. And it's upsetting because you know it should be interesting. I like I know why. I like the wrestlers, and I find them interesting. Why? Why? I know why. Because they are professional wrestlers. Mm-hmm. They are they are not fans of professional wrestling. The worst thing they are, they're not they're not trying to entertain. They're no, they're not trying to entertain no. by yeah. They're trying to promote them. Yeah. Jericho's promoting Jericho. JR is promoting JR. Steve mm-hmm. Austin is promoting Steve Austin. Re- the Wrestling Mayhem show, the one we're on right now is promoting professional wrestling because mm. we are not famous. Yeah. And we also promoted. we We're also famous. have to pay money to watch wrestling whereas they can literally do anything they want in wrestling for mm. free. Yeah. Yeah. Get, or get paid, or get yeah. paid for. Well, it. Yeah, we're, we're a fan. I mean, we're we're definitely a fan cast, regardless. Yeah, you know, um, and and we've been unapologetic about that. And we said that yeah, we are a fan cast. We're this. We're not smarter than anybody else. We, this is just our opinions, you know. Um, but and I think also for those because you, you compare it, like I think they all say are seeing what Coco Ban is doing, and he's having good conversations. Um, and I think it suffers from you know one, you know, you have to sit there and listen to the really horrible. Uh, commercials for weird crap right, right? that pod- mm-hmm. because podcast one is, and actually there was a good uh talk by the guy behind podcast one they're trying to get stars like them uh and tap into that and get a good listenership so they can sell advertising and unfortunately it's the very old school radio style you know the podcasts that i listen to in the tech sector do interesting ads right um uh, stuff they use you know i've actually purchased more stuff from tech podcasts that they've advertised and still advertise i swear i've been hearing about squarespace for about seven years at this point (laughs) and audible and stuff like that you know but there's it's not just like there are book you know the book recommendations i've gotten from mac mac break and this week in tech like my my wish list is incredible. I just haven't been listening to audiobooks lately. Um, stuff like that. Uh, versus, I mean, we experimented on here, but I felt like nothing was a good fit, nor was anybody really biting on it. Um, versus what we're yeah, doing now. It doesn't, it doesn't I, matter if it's a good fit. If we're making money, then it's a good fit. Hey, oh, yeah, um, yeah, Sorg, yeah. Sorg, hmm. Sorg. The flashlight was a good fit. It was a good fit, but I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah. Slice on Broadway. On slice on Broadway is a good fit. One size fits all. Oh, hey, there goes. Sorry, I'm still there advertising. Now, Slice on Broadway is a good fit because they're local, they're pizza, it makes sense. I mean, it's not for everybody, but 
uh, they're liking that their names getting out there. Now I'm getting into Pizza weird. Cup. I'm getting into weird inside baseball stuff here. Um, but but I think I think when you have all these guys trying to do oh, conversations with other wrestlers, going into the ad. Yeah, yeah what was? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little name drop. Go check them out. Slice on Broadway here in the South Coast of Pittsburgh. Really great pizzas. They provide our in studio uh, meat and guests uh, uh, with a great great pizza. Uh, and 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 Amazing. they're awesome. New location coming up in Carnegie, PA, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Sliceonbroadway.com. Slice up. Slice on Broadway. It's damn good. <laughs> but I didn't mean to, but it kind of just became that. Uh, it's about the time <laughs> where I'm supposed to do that anyway, so oh. let's go ahead and do that. Um, but no, uh, but I think, I think like, like about the third episode in of Stone Cold's cast, and this is where I determined I'm not going to listen to every episode, uh, was when he went off about getting like a manicure or, or a pedicure, uh, I remember getting that manscaped or something like that. It was the most horrendous thing I could listen to, to the point I know every time I tur- turn on Jericho's podcast, just skip the first 10 minutes. He's going off about whatever, yep. talking about going to uh, uh, Led Zeppelin with his kid or something. I don't care. You know, versus Colt. I care. Hold on, I, I care about Colt saying about some of the uh, things he's running into on the indie scene. And when he sits down with those guys, he's buddies. And some of these guys are buddy buddy mm-hmm. as far as like you know these other big name casts that we're talking about. But it's over the phone. It's doing this. You know, it, it's it's you know much like I'd rather you guys be in the studio. But I think we do have a pretty good thing with remotely. We, we, we've kind of tracked this guy these, this kind of thing down. Um, it's different. There's a different vibe to it. You can set, you can tell when they're face to face doing these interviews um, that you know it, it's just got that whole different feel to it. It's not a standard interview, and and I feel like every time I jump onto one of those interviews, it's like uh, you know I feel like every Jericho one is talking about Benoit at some point. Um, <laughs> you know it, it's you know there, there's 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 a formula to them and. Aside for something like Heyman, I thought there was a really good one with Heyman that I can't remember if it was J.R. or Stone Cold. Did. Also, same guests across all these shows. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Like, I, well, I, think it, I think it's just because they, like, like DDP, I know, did DD, uh, did uh, J.R.'s and Austin's within, like, a week or so. Yeah, yeah. But it, I, I, think it, I think they're just trying to get cross promotion because they all talk about each other's podcast basically. yeah and that's fine and that's fine and there's a market for it people will listen to it good for them seriously it's great for podcasting it's great for everything it brings more mm-hmm. people to podcasting which means maybe they'll find us listed under one of theirs in itunes you know you never know it's good for the entire so ecosystem just put, just put podcast one in the tags of our show people will find <laughs> it <laughs> I put all those guys, you know, uh, in, oh, yeah. in there. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, we'll talk to Snooki, sure. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk to Snooki. Sure, I'm sure, that'd be a short interview. Um, anyways, let's roll it back around. Did we get everybody what you guys are listening to and reading? I think Mike we just got one. You only got one of. Oh, us. okay. You just got one. Shit, I want to do that quick too. Riz, real quick. Um, like I said, I do watch that. We watch wrestling podcast. If you haven't checked it out, I need it's to check on. that out. Yeah. It's on Stitcher. It's it's amazing, um, and also I've only listened to like you know Art of Wrestling once or twice. Mm-hmm. I've only listened to I don't think I've listened to Jericho at all. I don't I don't listen to the main guys. I just listen to the you know the I listen to us by the way. Sword. Good. Somebody yeah. listens back to the show. And um, what I read is. I don't read whenever they say spoiler, I, but I do go on to like um, I I do follow Mark Madden when he talks about uh, on WrestleZone mm-hmm. when he talks about wrestling. He's so good uh, because because like him or hate him, he's pretty good at what he does. Mm-hmm. Um, but also I do follow No DQ sometimes. They get kind of boring at times, so I just kind of you know let them go. And if they do have a a specific story that I like, I do, you know, read it. Um, but other than I, that, I, I don't follow much, but by the way, I, back to at no DQ, uh, no DQ CAW. I want that to come back. <laughs> just the, the uh, YouTube show that they had with mm-hmm. just the, uh, N64 graphics. It's awesome. What was it called? No DQ. It's no DQ CAW. Oh, I remember that. Oh, I remember. I, I actually had to. I had to I stop reading thing. no DQ because it was just nothing but pop-ups and viruses every time I went there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's their site. 
fucking mess, which is another problem I've found in a lot of wrestling. Yeah, and actually, and I've liked, well, we had Justin Labar on the Indie Mayhem show a few weeks ago, and he talked about how WrestleZone, for instance, it is one of the cleanest experiences as far as going to one of those sites, uh, but it's backed mm-hmm. by, and he said that one of the few wrestling sites is actually backed by a major company, a major media company. And I think 411 Mania is too. Uh, am I right on that, LB? I think so. It's not bad. It does have its it's got its issues. Yeah. Um, but it's it's definitely not uh, not bad. I used to read that one all the time for for much of the same reason. Uh, what about you, Mike? What do you listen to and read? Um. Well, the only real wrestling site I read is WrestleZone. Um. I also read all of the wrestling reviews on Uprox by Brandon Stroud and Danielle Matheson. They're both really really good. All the stuff they post about wrestling is super fun. Uh, as far as podcasts go, I listen to us, obviously, um, because I love to hear the sound of my own voice, mm-hmm. amongst uh, amongst other reasons. Uh, I the also sound of LB's to, voice. Uh, well, oh, yeah. sometimes I put that on repeat right before I go to sleep. But uh, anyway, I listen Remind to me at the end of the show. I'll sing you a little bit. All right, sounds good. Um, <laughs> I listen to wrestlingaudio.com, which I've been a guest host there once or twice. Oh yeah, I remember that. And I listen to a show called Smart Wrestling Fan, hmm. which is really cool. They do um, each individual show per week, and they just do a rundown of it and drop in you know, thoughts and reviews about it and emails and all that stuff. And they actually have a, um, a paid version of their, of their podcast called Smart Wrestling Fan Retro, which started at uh, SummerSlam 1996 and goes on through the Monday Night Wars. Oh, wow. That sounds that's, yeah, that I, sounds like the uh, that Attitude Era podcast that AIM has been talking about, like how they're yeah, like uh, kind of recapping. Yeah, they do it. They do like week by week though. Like they watch Saturday Night's May Event. They watch Sunday Morning Superstars. They're going to wow. be watching Shotgun Saturday Night. Like they go through everything, and it's a really really interesting read. And if they have a light week, they'll pull out like Shawn Michaels when he was on Baywatch, and they'll review that episode. <laughs> it's very very funny. It's only like five bucks a month for to subscribe and you get like a whole bunch of back episodes of their podcast and everything. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it if you don't listen to it. Awesome. And awesome. it's kid it's kid friendly too. They don't curse at all. Wow. The anti us. Uh, it's kinda of like the a Chikara they style suck. Fuck those assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And we'll never fucking guess on that. God show. damn mother oh, I don't wow. fucking fucking Fuck you, fucking, I'm gonna fucking make money, fucking not cursing. I'll tell you what the fuck to do. You fucking make money by fucking cursing. It fucking worked for all kinds of people throughout history. It's fucking working for us, and it's gonna fucking work for you. Fuck is a magic word, and you're gonna fucking embrace it, and you're gonna make all kinds of motherfucking money. You're not gonna cut me off. I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, keep going. Keep when going. Do I, you don't we usually, when do we I'm cut you off? off? When do we cut you off? We cut you That's off when you rant. That's a good point. Yeah, there was. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, Sork, for not fucking. Wait, cutting why are you thanking him now? Fucking God, because he didn't fucking cut me off, Riz. He fucking let me fucking go when I'm trying to teach these motherfuckers about the beauty and joy of cursing on the fucking internet, which is the last place that you can really curse, and nobody's gonna give you any fucking goddamn motherfucking bullshit about it. I'm scared. The whole time I did that, it's just a view of Riz looking uncomfortable <laughs> on my screen. It's pretty great. <laughs> it's like you were cursing directly at him. <laughs> Maybe feel good. All right, on that note. Oh. Fucking Riz. Oh, wow. Riz, you look like sad Kurt Angle in the U.S. lost today. Oh. 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 Yes. Thank, wow. Thanks for spoiling that for me. On that note, hey, let's uh, let's take it to a break. We'll come back and remember when talk some uh, money in the bank. As definitely uh, want to hear a little bit of uh, LB's thoughts concerning his uh, recent realignment and uh, conditioning training. Uh, get to get ready for it, right, LB? Never been. That's right. We'll get into that. Maybe we'll have some pictures to go along with it as well. In the meantime, here's a little clip from a little music from Basic Sickness. If you're on video, a little clip from the recent RWA Unleash 6. Holy crap, this was a show. Last man standing. Uh, tables breaking some of the time. Uh, Josh Sampson returns another friend of the show. Defending it 
Ohio Championship in RWA. Uh, of course, Generation Dead were big fans of in a great match with Wild West. And uh, Loser leaves wrestling uh, with the best in Pittsburgh. Uh, so all that and more. Check it out and check out all the DVDs. Sorgatronmedia.com slash store. VOW Vicious Outcast Wrestling also has a new one called June Judgment 2. Including a lot of guys from Chikara. Including Assyrian Portal, uh, Tim Donst, and the Batiri. Uh, plus all the guys we know and love here from the area. So go check that out, sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Here's a little preview of the RWA, and we'll be right back with Remember When. Hey guys, welcome back, and like I said, go check that out and other titles over at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. We've got RWA, IWC, VOW, Prime Wrestling, and some great documentaries from uh, Outsource Announcing uh, and Joe Dombrowski. Uh, so with that, it's time for Remember When? So remember when and remember again. Remember when John Cena themed. Remember when. Remember when. That's all I have. That's all I have. I should have rewrote that's it. That's it. Or that's I it. Okay. All right. Um, no, there's a lot worse we've done on this show. Uh, so. <laughs> John Cena does it again. Number 15, and the title wins. Unless you watch him on Raw last night, it looks like he said 51. Whatever. Um, matter of time. Just a matter of time. Take that, Ric Flair. Uh, so uh, LB uh, was very adamant about doing our favorite John Cena moments. LB, take it away. I was very, I was very excited, uh, Sorg, uh, as readers. Of, Shut up, Bobby. <laughs> 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 Your face when you were saying that, though, is so happy. <laughs> it's because I have chosen to be happy as a wrestling <laughs> fan. And I want all of you to come with me on this journey as any reader of WrestlingMayhemShow.com would know I have recently made the decision to become a John Cena fan and what started out as jokey satire has proved to be an enlightening way of life. I watched the pay-per-view with fresh eyes and when it came down and the entire inter internet was grumpy and bitching and uh, their girlfriends were videotaping them snapping DVD cases in half like that one fat fuck um, I was rejoicing because my favorite wrestler, Jonathan L. Cena, won the titles. Pulled him right down like the doctor of thugonomics that we all know that he is. Very exciting. And this week we're going to talk about the best John Cena moments to ever take place. And I'm going to kick it off with one of the best ones. John Cena, if you can believe it wasn't always such a sweet, sweet guy. He used to be a misunderstood young street thug. Can you believe it? I can, because uh, I was there. And uh, he had a feud with, uh, you know, the dead man, the Undertaker, as you do. And the Undertaker... I was afraid you were going to say Eddie Guerrero. Eddie? No, no, no. He did have no, a feud that. with him, too. <laughs> I'm just and like, that's a really weird play way for you to bring that oh, one up. I'm sorry. That is, <laughs> that is a whole other line that I'm not willing to cross. <laughs> anyway, he had a feud with The Undertaker, and I remember specifically a vignette. I think it took place on SmackDown, because if you can't believe it, John Cena used to be on SmackDown. And uh, he cut a promo on The Undertaker in a graveyard, done, pissed on a grave that said The Undertaker. Now, at the time, I thought he was a little dumb, a little childish, you know, a little crude and uninspired. But now, with my fresh C-Nation eyes, rock fools! It's the greatest John Cena moment ever! Pissing on graves and calling out The Undertaker. Sorg, how about you? You know the same thing. And I've been I've been reminded of the Thugonomics era because they've been showing the uh, Big Show U.S. title win uh, from WrestleMania that one year. I think twenty, maybe twenty one. No, it was twenty at Madison Square Garden. Um, and again, also fond of the Thugonomics era. Can I go to a lesser moment for John Cena? Can we say this Absolutely. is probably his worst 
WrestleMania moment when he was well into thugonomics. Uh, I believe was still a bad guy. Although we were kind of like, hey, you know, I, I think we were like kind of behind him. We like he was our like Daniel Bryan is now at the time, right? We really wanted it because it was really something fresh and different. And then he did it for 10 years. Uh, I mellowed out a little bit. Um, but still, he was, I, I think they were supposed to actually line something up about this. But he comes out at WrestleMania and he's got, a, I believe, a cardboard cutout of Eminem who he wanted to battle rap. And proceeded. Uh, this, was, this was before WrestleMania 19. I think it was at WrestleMania 19. No, no, it wasn't on it. It was on the pre-show. Oh, okay. That, well, that okay. That makes sense then. But still, WrestleMania, right? Um, but yeah, it, that, that, not not one of his finer moments, especially considering what he'd go on to do. So, uh, w- what about you, uh, Riz? Um, the one moment that really stuck out to me was the very first time we saw John Cena lift up the big show at mm-hmm. WrestleMania. Like, at that time, that was the, the Andre Hogan moment there. Now, as time grew on, it got a little soured when every time he did that move, the announcers would have you know, jumped on it like it was the first time that anyone has ever lifted a 500-pound human off the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, But that first time where people were really behind John Cena, when he he beat the Big Show just like that, it – actually, he didn't beat the Big Show then. He actually kicked out at two, which is kind of weird. Um, (laughs) But just – just the, the fact that he picked up the big show and then threw him over his shoulder was just amazing to see it watching uh, WrestleMania. I was there for that. That nice. place went insane. Yes. Mm-hmm. That place went insane. Mike, what about you? Um, I'm also going to go uh, back to a time when John Cena would like to quote unquote rap with the youngsters. Um, I, I would like to quote a two-line verse from the rapper John Cena from SmackDown on July 24th in the year of our Lord 2006. Um, and Sable's just a hoe. You're a diva with class. Nobody's watching us, Steph. Why don't you let me smack that ass? And he did, and it was good. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, rock fools. <laughs> Oh. Wow! <laughs> what about you, Bobby F J Town? Um, I got, I got, mine, mine's a toss up. Um, that time Big Show slammed him into the uh, uh, spotlight. Oh wow! Oh, oh the yeah. was really good. <laughs> and and um, his actual debut. I mean, against Kurt Angle, he almost he almost picked up the victory over Kurt Angle. Everybody was like, "Who the hell is this guy?" And he comes out and he has a really good match, and you know. It, 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 I, it was a moment I'll never forget. So. Damn you, Bobby. Oh, I'm sorry, Will. Uh, somebody told somebody else. <laughs> it it happened time, again. Right? That, that's all right. I had a backup. All right. <laughs> Wheels, what's your backup? The day that Brock Lesnar and him went face-to-face, and they just started wailing on each other, and Brock <laughs> just went, oh, oh, yeah, this is WWE. This, this is an MMA. I'm not supposed to bust you open. That was one of the most entertaining moments ever. Because just watching Cena going, he really busted me open. (laughs) So, I mean, I enjoyed it very much. Why? Because, hey, wrestling's still real to me, damn it. Dog. And the dog's pissed, too. Still real to him. (laughs) Still real to him. And I think we got everybody there. Uh, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. What? Ah, Riz. You're pissing off my dog. Oh, so okay. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Riz. I love your doggy. Um, and Thank of course, uh, if you have any great John Cena moments, please hit us up on Twitter at Mayhem Show or the Facebook or Google Plus for Wrestling Mayhem Show or the group anywhere you want or leave in the comment if you found this video.
you know, that kind of stuff. So go check that out. Guys, also please go check out friends of our show. You can wear some show on your back. ProWrestlingTees.com. The usual. We got uh, Pro- Good Times for Wrestling Mayhem Show, Property of Mayhem Show, the logo. But, uh, of course, above that, while you're putting our stuff in there, in your in your cart, ready to go, <laughs> make sure you support uh, Wrestler T-shirts, some great indie guys trying to get by. Some great stuff. Hacks like Jim Duggan, Axel Rotten, Anthony Nice. Bobby Heenan, we mentioned him a little bit earlier. I think that might have been off show. My apologies. The new release, uh, Evan Bourne, I believe. Um, no, no, that's somebody else I saw. All kinds of great stuff. So go check it out. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. And cover your back in mayhem. Uh, so I want to talk money in the bank. But first, kind of going off of our remember when that we just kind of got into, um, I want to talk about Flashbox. Huh? I want to talk about mm-hmm. Lunchbox and I want to, uh, in, in pictures. Uh, he was very. This is this is not. He's not. He is very into John Cena. I witnessed this. Okay, uh, LB. Uh, first of all, there was. Uh, you found the toys. Uh, That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, to be fair, the uh, the wrestle buddy I was handed. Mm-hmm. Um, it was absolutely in my lap almost the entire evening. Um, it, but it, yes, I did the. Uh, acquire the action figure there so here's a picture of uh, uh the act the, the small john cena riding the big john cena and you taking some artful pictures with that um <laughs> and then and then i think it goes it goes another direction as uh now this is my version of the picture of course you have the better one uh there's a, yeah, there's a very arty picture on my uh on my instagram of uh, uh seamus looking real happy and he's uh it's it's his face through john cena's <laughs> armhole there like over his bicep it's a great it's a great very good picture um i'll post it i'll post it over on wrestling mayhem show.com mm-hmm. what's that there's there's no suggesting of anything in that picture no it's, it's, your ima- it's, it's art it's art it's Use art. your imagination black and white parts of it are blurry you'll see head on over to uh facebook.com slash wrestling mayhem show and give it a look see what's your inst- um, what's your instagram uh it's private Oh, that, that makes more sense, and so, I see so why. None of your damn business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell people, but you can't see it. Uh, of course. Um, we, I must like John Cena. <laughs> and of course, we do have a reaction picture after he won Money in the Bank. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I was very happy because I didn't think he was going to pull it out, and then he just peeled it out. So uh, we talked about, uh, I guess not so much on the wrap up last night, but uh, uh, you know it was a, it was really interesting. We got Seth Rollins winning winning Money in the Bank, of course, John Cena winning the belt. No other title changes. Usos retain, uh, Paige retains, and of course we saw what happened to her last night on Raw mm-hmm. with the AJ Lee. Uh, and again, I, I I think I don't know if we'll get into it much here, uh, but if you want more about all the returns last night, I'll, I'll listen to. The uh, WWE Raw wrap up. Uh, it's over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on uh, iTunes and Stitcher, and you can see what we thought about that. Um, but as far as Money in the Bank itself, uh, did you guys enjoy it? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, this is oh, definitely. Well, I, I mean, pause. I feel like there's not Money in the Bank will not get any better than the year CM Punk was going to leave, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, like as a show. There were so many questions. There was such great stuff, and it, and and really, like, definitely that match overshadowed the Money in the Bank matches themselves for sure. Um, and maybe I don't know if there was really a go-to, you know, yeah, give that guy a chance in this case. Mm-hmm. I feel like Shield, in some fashion, were foregone conclusions, or Wade Barrett, perhaps, if he didn't get injured. Um, but there's nobody like there's nobody you feel like's been held down for way 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 too long and is finally getting it like an Edge or a Dolph Ziggler or a CM Punk, right? Like I don't feel like anybody was ready for that, you know. I feel like there was a lot of mid card loiters, I could call it, uh, <laughs> for, for 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 lack of a better term, um, but still turned out great Money in the Bank matches. I think in both cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't really agree. Have, go, Mike. I, I I didn't really have any issues with the match quality. Mm-hmm. Like all the matches were really fun to watch, and a surprising one was the uh, Naomi Page match. 
which mm-hmm. I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, that was surprising. But, but it just felt like that with no title changes and with the expected scene win, it kind of felt like stagnant almost a little bit. Okay. Okay. Because like okay. A, apart from two ladder matches, it felt like a regular Raw or SmackDown. And I think a title change could have really helped with that. Because, Perhaps. I mean, you, you could have even had exactly what happened with AJ last night happen with Naomi instead. Mm-hmm. Like, Naomi could have been like, listen, I was, I was supposed to get a title shot. I broke, my, I broke my eye socket, and I couldn't come through at WrestleMania. I came back, I fought back, I beat Paige, and then all of a sudden AJ skips out and takes the belt from her. Mm-hmm. And then you have a different storyline going. Like I, I don't know. I feel like there needed to be something in the middle of that because Seth Rollins. Although I think Seth Rollins will do fine with the briefcase, the actual way he won it was really kind of shitty. Mm-hmm. And it didn't. It wasn't like a a feel good moment one way or the other. It was just kind of like, oh, we're doing this because it oh, almost well. telegraphed. It almost telegraphed even more that Cena was going to win the title. Well, that's, I mean, the way the way he won is really easy to explain. He's heel. Yeah. It was best for business at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was plan B. He, he's heel. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I mean, they're not uh, supposed to win in feel-good ways. <laughs> that's true that's true you're not supposed to be happy about it you know um no it, it progresses i mean the whole thing is part of a bigger picture of the authority uh story you know and where does anybody fit in it and that's why again i, I and i'm kind of with you to a certain point where it does really feel like uh people are placeholders you know um even unfortunately something like cesaro i feel like if you were going to have cesaro win the belt you would have heard a lot more from paul Heyman. And I think Paul Heyman did talk a good bit, maybe over on main event when I saw an episode or two in this past month, but not on Raw. If if, if Cesaro was a serious contender for that belt in that match, you Paul Heyman would have not stopped. Versus the next day, you see what's happening, uh, where they're building up to this battle royal now for the Intercontinental Championship. I think it's very obvious to, uh, Cesaro is a strong, uh, or you want they want you to believe he's a strong contender for that, especially given his. Uh, uh, WrestleMania performance at, at the Battle Royal. Uh, so, I, I, you know, you can kind of read the, we kind of can see the patterns, right, over the month and be like, well, it's got to be this guy or this guy. They're not really putting it up in the air. Um, it involves the authority. It's got to be X, Y, or Z. So. Here's the, the one with the um, the Money in the Bank contract match. The one with, with uh, South Rollins winning. Mm-hmm. You kind of had the feeling that it was either going to be canceled out or one of the two was going to win. But, but, who here thought Kofi was about to win? No. Right here. <laughs> no. Yeah. And honestly, After with that almost spot, with that killing, spot, I would have been okay with him winning. Yeah. After almost killing Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Just knocking him off the ladder and hitting him three times with the rung of the ladder. That would have been a good uh, wild card winner, I think. Yeah, and and like you, it, like I said last time, uh, you don't have to do, you don't have to cash it in right away. You can yeah. build on you know whoever went. You can build up that person, like the Miz or CM Punk for the first time or something like that, but. With John Cena and winning the title, uh, AJ came in and just it, uh, our our AJ uh, at the at the at the party on Sunday Bo came in Bo and Bo Bo F Woo Woo, Woo. Woo. Uh, stated just blatantly asked. So, LOL, Cena wins, right? <laughs> Those were well, his exact words, and and still that match you could, I could have saw Cesaro winning, I could have saw Bray Wyatt winning, I the only one I didn't really see winning was Sheamus. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I thought Sheamus could have won it. 
I really did. You guys mean, Give me you guys mean James. Uh, James. When it James. For you, yes, James. What is it? Uh, Seamus is uh, Irish for James. Is that? Yes. What you're yes. saying, Bobby? <laughs> so basically, he's James. James. James O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> There's Bobby. Uh, wow. Um, okay. Any thoughts, uh, uh, Wheels? You got any thoughts on Money in the Bank in general? The matches? Anything else that happened out there? I'll tell you what. The craziest thing I thought of it because I saw. Uh, if you think back, sort of the G Raver thing of landing on a ladder mm-hmm. when <laughs> Seth flew off that ladder and it just, he just bounced and it bounced off the roots. That and was just, scary. That, yeah, yeah, that was nuts. nuts because, I mean, he bounced off up in the air, lands back on it, and it pushes him off into the other ladder head first. I'm like, ow. <laughs> I'm uh, like, can we, he's not winning. <laughs> all right. What was everyone's favorite spot from one of the ladder matches? I think that easily that. There. I think oh, that was yeah. for me. Um, yeah. that no. Chris? No. The, the the spot where um where there was two ladders conjoining. Yes. And they tip over mm. and Cesaro oh, climbs cool. the other la- the other side of the ladder and they just push the ladder back over. Also <laughs> Cesaro and Seamus both hanging from each idol and Cesaro is so fucking freakishly strong, he's able to punch Seamus down. <laughs> from that was fucking amazing. I forgot about that. <laughs> like, Cesaro is so freakishly strong that he's like, hey, you know what? It's a leather strap. I have my forearm. I can hold my own weight up while punching the other guy in the face. Sure. <laughs> and you know what? I'll punch him in five languages, too. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Awesome. Anybody else? Uh, Bobby, uh, LB. I, I I marked out when uh, when Paul Revere came out, uh, just because I thought he was going to be added into the uh, Money in the Bank match, and he wasn't. But it it was still kind of a fun little match, uh, I guess. Bobby, did you hear him say the elbow is coming? The elbow yeah, is coming. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. But um, I was kind of disappointed they didn't put anybody in in place of Wade Barrett. Yeah. 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 That's not the point. I, I was hoping for somebody else. I was they, what they should have done probably was had uh, Big E versus Rusev qualify. The winner of that would qualify for the, maybe that the ladder match or like Mike was doing the Bo Dallas thing. Yeah. Maybe put yeah. Bo Dallas in there. Money in the bank. So I don't know. Just just some random thoughts. Phony in the bank. How about uh, I I kind of enjoyed uh, Randy Orton leading like a crazy person. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, my God. That was, that was interesting. Nuts. I love how they even cleaned him up once and he still had like mm. a crimson mask at the end of that match. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Who was it that he did it to? Uh, I think it might have been Cesaro, maybe? But they were yeah, up on the RKO. RKO. Swung them off and RKO'd him. Who was that? Yeah, Cesaro. Cesaro. Yeah. Cesaro. That was good shit. Yes. That, that was a tremendous RKO. And he wonders why I love using him in all the games, because you can hit that thing from anywhere. Uh, who, who do you guys no, not, think... Um, from, no, not from anywhere. From, out, nowhere. Of nowhere. from out of nowhere. <laughs> who do you think won for the night as far as Money in the Bank, as far as had the best showing, yet didn't win? Uh, you know, a belt or a briefcase. Mm. Kofi. Kofi? Okay. Kofi usually shines I'm gonna, in this. I'm going to go with Dean Ambrose. Okay. I'm gonna say Cesaro. Yeah, Cesaro too. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Bobby, I didn't mean to. I didn't feel like I. I felt like Cesaro didn't have enough going on to put him over. Yeah, there was no swing. No. Yeah. Yeah, but he hasn't been doing the swing on purpose. Yeah, I noticed. (laughs) Yeah. He was going to swing Kofi on Monday, and he said, "Nope." We can. We can probably blame uh, Matt Collins for that. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. I know you're listening. I know you're listening. There have been <laughs> way too many injuries in this company the past few that weeks. That too. Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah. Uh, I like to attribute all the unevenness in the pay per view to the fact that they just reshuffled that deck. 
Yeah, that's why they brought yeah. everybody back. Last well, here's night. the other thing. Here's and, and 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 I thought I noticed this on Raw because um, I really get the feeling it's like you know we always complain about oh we just saw this match on SmackDown or main event right. Well, they just let go a, a decent section of their roster right, and I, and I'm looking kind of look look paying attention to the numbers of guys that they have or at least that they use and that they can depend on for whatever however mm-hmm. they determine that. And I really think mm-hmm. they're just running out of people. Um, and so we are seeing a very rehashed match lineup just because we're running out of people, guys. You know, uh, yeah. they, they're spreading all those across three, six, six uh, uh, seven hours of wrestling program every week, press crossing some of them over to NXT, plus a pay-per-view once every month-ish as we were looking at the schedule. Uh, oddly, there's no pay-per-view in October, apparently. Um and they lost a that NXT is... wrestler because they lost Corey Graves now. Did they lose him? Like, what, yeah, injury? he's done. He's, done. He, he's done wrestling, he said. What? What happened? Yeah, I didn't know that. Concussions, yeah. Is that they concussion? concussion. They, they're, gonna, they're trying to find another spot for him in the company, they said. Wait, oh, that's who? good. Who was that? Uh, Corey SJK. Graves. Corey, Corey Graves. Sir, uh, Sterling James Keenan, as we knew him when he was on the show a couple times here. Um, wow, that, also, he, that sucks. Well, at least he he's got a job, right? T- he favorited one of my tweets this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but no, seriously. Like, even though something like that happens, at least you say they're trying to find... I think he'd be a great trainer. Because I think he used mm-hmm. to train... Mm-hmm. I, I think he might have used to train here uh, in town. Um, you know, he's, he's got a yeah, great mind for he, the business. He was uh, he is actually Ashton Amherst trainer. That's right. They mentioned that at the show a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, so, so, I mean, I think it'd be great to have him pair down there with like Sarah Del Rey and, and Smiley and a bunch of those other guys. Either way, you know, I, you know, for a lot of those guys like in that position, no, not everybody's going to become John Cena. Not everybody's going to be a mainstay on Raw, but just so... so <laughs> Nobody's going to be John Cena, sir. Nobody. <laughs> I, I, I know, Nobody I know I'll be. But, but to Nobody see... Nobody is going to be John Cena. <laughs> Hashtag Rise But hey. to see a guy like that who who's busted his ass on the indies for so long, uh, at least be at a place where he can get a steady paycheck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For wrestling, you know, with yeah. the big guys. I mean, there's a lot of people there that, you know, guys like Hugh Morris, guys like, you know, uh, uh, Dean Malenko didn't ri- really find his spot with the company until he was backstage, it feels. Um, you know, a, a lot of those guys. Um, I'm just happy for anybody who makes it to that. You know, so so yeah. so you know, uh, uh, you know. Shout out to SJK, Gory Graves, uh, whatever you decide to call yourself in the future. <laughs> um, I mean, he's a he, and he's a you know he's a hometown guy. He's a Pittsburgh guy, so I, you got know, you got to kind of pull for him. You know, if if Logan Shulo something happened and he decided and he got an office job tomorrow, I'd be happy for him. You know, yeah. I mean, really, in the long run, or a lot uh, Samuel Elias or TJ Perkins was was that what they called him? T- Did you guys catch Perkins. this? Yeah, they told mm-hmm. they call him that, and they said he's a biking enthusiast. Chachi called caught that from his match last week, so we'll see wow. where it goes with that. I don't know. Let's not. I don't I'm know. Pretty sure TJ Perkins. Biking. TJ Perkins is manic. Oh no, no, it wasn't TJ Perkins. It was the the last name was Perkins, but I forgot what his first name was. JT Pe- Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. They used his other name before. Like they used the one that's on his Twitter before. So I, I don't know. I don't know what it's about. Now that, that WWE is just pulling things from random restaurants and, and chain stores. Let's combine uh, TJ Maxx and Perkins. There you go. I could, I, I could go they're for just going to end up calling him Devin Devinson and they're going to go, we thank the wrestling mayhem show for that. Should. Should. At least give us a sponsorship <laughs> or something. You know? So we go can, go yeah. follow them on uh, Stitcher and Spreaker and. There you go. Just, just say it once yeah. on the WWE Network. I'll be okay. Well, you know, just like run my tweet from the Mayhem show. I'd be happy with that. You know, you know, I never get any followers whenever my my Twitter pops up. Then again, my Twitter pops up at like two in the morning when I'm watching WWE old school. So that's, <laughs> that's when you can get in the door and say I've been on TV. Uh, anyways, uh, anything else we want to touch on before we get out of here today, guys? Uh, I'd like to say that the. Uh Divas match at Money in the Bank was a very pleasant surprise. Mm-hmm. Both of them yes. were. Mm-hmm. Which one? Both, both of them? them? I just said both of them, yes. Both of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The one because the wrestling was excellent, and the other one because Fandango was hilarious. <laughs> okay, okay. It was. Okay. Correct. Okay. He loves trying. Apologies. 
That, that was, that his, was little, his little butt wiggle while they were in a submission hole. <laughs> it was more the it was more it than was, a butt wiggle. It was it was, it was, it was a full crux thrust. By the way, that's what he did during the commercial break on main event in Pittsburgh, <laughs> like for like a minute. It was weird. <laughs> weird. Uh, anyways, amazing. Uh, no, deal. You know, great women's wrestling. I, I kind of made the crack, and I know Eamon got pissed about this on the Mayhem Show account, where I was like, "Wow, this is like a good in- this is like a good indie, ma- re- indie uh, wrestling match here with these girls." And he's like, "Why can't it just be a good match?" I'm like, "Indie <laughs> wrestling, right?" Yeah, uh, it is because that's what we base our and plus uh, and plus you're also specifying it so that people can read your tweets later so they know what match you're talking about precisely. No, nah, yeah, mm-hmm. kind of. Anyways, um, but no, it, it, great stuff. It, it, great to see the women's division doing some awesome stuff there. A little weird. Did, did Paige go a little healy there right before the title loss? I thought. Um, I oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was. They did a double turn. Did a double turn? That's interesting. No, I, I, no, I honestly think that because when when AJ came back, they knew she was going to get cheered because AJ was basically getting cheered as a heel. Mm-hmm. So. They might as well flip the script and, ha- and do the exact segment that uh, Paige won the title in reverse. And, and well, plus, Paige... everybody thinks that CM Punk's right behind her. Yeah, let, let's He's be honest. He's not coming yes. back. Yeah, but, no, but everybody no, thinks it. They're all begging for it out there. <laughs> the only He's reason watching why... watching the hockey hot stove. The only reason... I will go on record to say the only reason she was cheered that loudly and that violently last night was because of the hopes of seeing the elusive CM Punk watch. Guys, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. The odds of CM Punk returning went up 1%. To negative 99%. Dude, it's like 1%. trying to find a legendary Pokemon. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. I'm sorry. Speak for yourself, it's- motherfucker. I have had the pleasure of many legendary Pokemon's companies. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, I keep I a Master see. Ball on my person at all points in time. And they were all shiny. I I'm mean, also I having a stroke, see apparently. So many people, I mean, when you heard the CM Punk chants last night when Paige and AJ were there, you even saw AJ go, looking at everybody like, you really think he's coming back? <laughs> so she's even like, Come on, guys. Be real. Just because I'm back doesn't mean he's coming back. Comment by from the way, chat room, by the way. Like whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody's okay. chanting that thinking. I'm sorry. The comment from the chat room, by the way. Eamon has chimed in during our conversation. I'm sorry. I had a window above it. Uh, you don't do a title change to make a pay-per-view better, he contends. I think that's mm-hmm. with what you were saying earlier, Mike. Okay, I, I still think you can do one because <laughs> it's not like it's not like they're not going to give the Wyatts the belts eventually. True, true. Um, and also the uh, presumably to who like kind of made out best that night. Uh, the answer is clearly Ambrose. He is yes. over. The crowd was dead for the main event. And Dean Ambrose is getting stone cold like cheers. I feel. Yeah. Man, man. I was afraid yeah. they were gonna pop his shoulder back in. <laughs> like right there. I know. Please. <laughs> I'm like, do it. Do it. Make it happen. Do it. He even wanted them to do it. Do it here yeah. now. Do it. I'm like, dude, no, nobody wants to see that on TV right now. <laughs> I'd be awesome if we saw that on TV right then. It's a pay per view. We're allowed to, right? Right. We paid our ten dollars. Yeah, we paid our ten dollars for that. And nothing like popping your shoulder right back out of place by whacking the guy with the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, good show. Good wrestling. Great stuff, guys. What'd you learn from wrestling this week? How about you, uh, Wheels? I. What have I learned from wrestling this week? I have learned I truly love Bobby Fulton. I love the money in the bank. And I just love wrestling in general. It's just it's not making me lose interest anymore when it used to. Now I'm just like, okay, what's next? What is next for everybody? Not just one company, not one anything. Wrestling is actually, I think, taking an upswing again. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What about you, Bobby? I learned that uh, WWE Network is going to have a children's block of programming, starting with uh, Saturday Morning Slam, or not not Saturday Morning Slam, Slam City, uh, leading into the debut of I Love, or Fandango Loves Triangles, starring Fandango. (laughs) 
<laughs> wow. Uh, LB, you want to follow that one up? Sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I learned that sometimes uh, the most obvious things, things that make the most sense, are often right in front of your face, but you just can't see them. No, I'm not talking about John Cena. I'm not talking about John Cena. I'm talking about uh, fucking Jack Swagger, the All-American yeah. hero, taking on the Russian Superman. It was Ooh. perfect. It was perfect, and I didn't see it coming. It's dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> Riz, how about you? I actually learned two things. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I think Lunchbox is laughing at is because um, at said party that we both attended, uh, a certain person, I, one of the people that was there without knowledge of wrestling, uh, mentioned that the two people that you see on your screen right now, Lunchbox and myself, oh, yeah. are are in fact twins. That's not, oh, that's yes. not why I shaved. That's not why I dropped down to the mustache. I'm mm -hmm. going to take this off so it's no like comparison really. Oh my god. I don't know <laughs> if, if the, the audio listeners uh, if you want you can Sora can like screen cap it and put posts in the Facebook group. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, it's just to the point where there has to be some closure. <laughs> uh, and also, the WWE is um, is is not doing a good job on uh, doing this tag team with. I, I do not like Stardust. I will not get Stardust until he is swung down. Until dust dust is swung down <laughs> from the rafters, like rotating, going. That. These are my boys. These are my came from me, and in gold polka dot <laughs> face paint. That's what I learned. You I would get... not like stardust until that happens. This is Dusty Rhodes backstage getting his makeup on. Now, now you get you see you gotta get all up in the crevices. There's, a, there's, there's money scars, and I, I got I got to get a lot of paint in there to cover that up there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, that's that's a weird smock right there. <laughs> it's me. What? I would give, yeah. any, wait, wait, I would wait, give anything to see Dusty Rhodes in a gold tight singlet. <laughs> what? No, or not to? Whoa. Or not yeah. to? Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, Riz. LB, I'm sorry. It's just all you white people look alike. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Oh, I don't want to say that, Neil, because it was a black guy who said we were twins. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah, in, the, in the interest of full disclosure, I did have the exact same. I had the, the, the facial hair that Riz had. had the and I was, I was also wearing my glasses. So. <laughs> now you you look mad, Mike. Now you kind of look like Aiden English. <laughs> yeah, you do. Oh, oh, there you go. God. Oh my god! You're a Vaughn villain! <laughs> wait, till, wait till tomorrow when I get into the mustache waxing curl. Oh, oh um, no. Then you look like Simon Gotch. Gotcha, dick. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking tie somebody to railroad track. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that, LB. We're brothers, remember that. Well... Oh. You can just roll away if that happens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, Mike, Mad Mike, track. please, what'd you learn from wrestling tonight? Please, God. I, I learned two things, Sorg. I learned, one, I cannot wait until Dolph Ziggler and Summer Rae do the Shawn Michaels diesel pose on Raw. And two, I can't wait until Bobby Lashley takes a wheelchair-ridden Kurt Angle and throws him off a balcony at Universal Studios. Into a pit of slime? Yes. Okay. That's the only <laughs> thing you can do at Universal Studios. So I learned, uh, guys, uh, I learned from a little bit of editing I did late last week. Um, mm. When you don't break the table the first time, 
<laughs> As in, you bounced off the table the first time. Don't do it again. I think you'd learn. <laughs> well, obviously, they figured out. Throw the other guy through the table to try to make it work. Because that's what happened. <laughs> And from a at the end from a higher distance as they went up on a yes. platform scoreboard. Yeah. Uh RWA Unleash Six. Go check out <laughs> SorgatronMedia.com. Um anyways, guys, it's been your wrestling mayhem show. You guys are some crazy motherfuckers. First of yes, all, you thank are. you. Uh for thank you, another fantastic, fantastic show. You can join us, of course, continue the conversation of wrestling mayhem show.com. You can find this show however you want, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube. Please leave comments, share it with your friends if they're into this kind I of humor, radio. Or even to your mom. Let's you know what that to it with your parents. Also, you can drop us a line Whoa. to Good Times. <laughs> right, good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Wow, that sounded awkward. 412-206-WMS0. And um, you can check us out again at Mayhem Show on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Facebook group, a lot of great conversation, and pictures going on all around there. Uh, thank you to somebody for... Uh, I guess I'm taking the notes tonight. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you can join us here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. But we start the shenanigans early. At as early as 4 p.m. actually on that channel with some other shows. So you can check out that schedule there at sorgatronmedia.com. Episode 100 well. of Boss Battle. <coughs> as coming up next week, video games, Riz, technology, movies. There you go. Uh, until next time, Mayhem Show. Out.